on your table in your home you've probably got a little tub of salt and salt although it just looks like little bits of powder is actually lots of very small crystals that they are beautiful things at the university here we're really interested in how crystals grow now crystals are very important for many many things that you you will use uh, in your daily life, uh, they're used in your computers. The drugs that you'll take if you're, you're unwell, all those uh, things are crystals. The thing about crystals is that they can grow in lots of different environments, but no one really understands how they grow. So what crystals are, are a regular array of pretty much the same building block, and that building block could be one particular molecule or it could be a collection of molecules that are related to each other but when taken as a unit they're repeated throughout the crystal. And you have to ask yourself how does that happen? It's when one molecule comes along to the growing crystal phase how does it know to align itself in the right way to continue growing the crystal? These are really fundamental questions about how matter organises itself. It was only about 10 years ago that we got special microscopes, and uh, here is one of those microscopes, uh, which are able to look at the molecular details of how uh, the crystals grow. Now we can look at how the crystals are growing almost molecule by molecule, and we can look at all these different crystal types, and every single one grows in a completely different way. We're making crystals of different families of materials. Uh, we're particularly looking at ones that are nanoporous and we're basically watching how they grow in real time. And so overall we want to gain a greater understanding of how these things grow so hopefully in the future we can add more design to their growth and their final function. I'm studying the breakdown of the molecules on the surface of the crystals using AFM. First of all, we need to synthesize the zeolite materials. We mix the silica source, the aluminum uh, source, and some other stuff like water and also the structure directing agent. And then we make a gel of them. And then we pour them into pressure vessel and heat it to do the reaction uh, up to 230 centigrade. And then we're also using a new program that's been developed in the group called Crystal Grower to verify and simulate how these things grow. The method that's developed in, the, in that programme has allowed every single crystal system out there to be broken up into little pieces. In the past, people might have worked on one crystal type only, but this enables all of them to be studied. I take the results from the growth program that Mike has written and blow up the crystals on the screen and start rotating them and moving them and you can then zoom in on the surface and look at the arrangement of atoms on the surface and then you can relate that back to the data you get from the microscope. You can test how you would change some conditions to change the shapes and sizes of the crystals. You know exactly how things are being favoured, why different sites are being chosen and why the shapes actually emerge. Here is a, a crystal, it's a crystal of uh, calcite. Now if you take exactly the same material but you arrange the ions in a different way you get a different mineral. This is called aragonite. It has a different shape, but actually it's made up of exactly the same thing. And here's a third form of calcium carbonate, which we're probably all familiar with, shells on the beach. And the reason you've got this beautiful mother of pearl on this side of the shell is because the creature which has made these crystals has managed to control the crystal size and shape. It's about 20,000 times stronger than the crystal of calcium carbonate. So materials chemists are really interested in being able to control crystal size and shape if they can make cheap materials which are extremely strong. This can be very important in certain areas of chemical industry where, for example, different drug 
molecules, if they're crystallized differently, they may behave slightly differently in your body. And you want to make sure that it dissolves before it actually passes out of the body and, and it doesn't dissolve also too quickly. It's got to dissolve at the right uh, place. Now the, the shape of the crystal will affect enormously the way that molecule actually dissolves in the body. We've got some incredible materials orientated facilities in the university including things like BP, ICAM and OMIC and these are research institutes and their pure focus is on doing groundbreaking materials science.